coming back from the f yeah from yeah I'm coming back from the future. Let y'all know what the subject today is. We're gonna be talking about black woman. The black woman, public enemy number one. So make it through the toast. We gonna have us a good talk. Peace, family. Bring them out, 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 bring them out. All right, y'all. So, YouTube fam, there you go right there. That is that mixture. That is that detox ambrosia. And it's a great coochie juggler. Yes, it is. Every day that we can experiment and, and sit around and, and try new things is a great day. And it's a great coochie chocolate today. Uh-oh. Some people going to get mad today because the, the topic today is going to be black woman, public enemy number one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You got to tune in and check this one out. Some people going to get hurt, get their feelings hurt today. And it ain't going to be the black woman, though. But black woman, public enemy number one. So it's going to be kind of shocking, I think, for some. Because we got a whole industry built around the whole black man mythos and stuff like that. But I need to, I need to give my perspective on that. But we about to toast this morning. I want to welcome everybody. I want to thank everybody for taking the time for watching this because I know a lot of y'all catch it later. Um, uh, I want to thank those that catch it live, uh, especially Ms. Sheila. She always up here um, early in the morning. All right. So first, you know, we have to drink our water. So get your water. Go ahead, drink up. I forgot something. Drink up. Two ounces. I don't know how many ounces you go to. Go for
So, once again, this is that chloroxygen. Let's see how this works. My body's a little bit used to it, like with the uh, black black seed oil. Get used to it. And make adjustments. Two ounces gone, y'all. Mm. All right. Today, we sampling the grape. I know I showed y'all that one, but I just wanted to let y'all know that the experiment is on. Try to do a little detox plan. I need that. I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that sit until it reaches that that vinegar piece. So I don't have to add the vinegar. I got the vinegar right there. So right now, sampling on that grape and bold brosia. Chewing fast. I think I'm gonna be able to go bottle these up. Probably, I think I'm gonna bottle them up maybe tomorrow. Tonight we got this show. Um, all if all work well, so I'll um, be listening out for about 9 p.m. Um, we will be doing uh, folk tales for grown folks. All right. Well, I can't really see it. I'm used to doing that. I'm gonna give me a clear. I'm gonna have to give me a new clear glass. All right, family. First off, we want to toast the Creator by whatever name you choose. Call the Creator. We call on that great power to bless and guide us, to strengthen us each and every day of our lives. We want to toast this, toast the Creator for giving us another Kuji Chakalia. Um, so we toast that Creator and we say, Ashe. From there, we move to our personal ancestors. We call on them. Um, we call on them every day. You know what I'm saying? We remember them like they remembered us. We we remember them because they gave us breakfast on days when we was hungry. They fed us dinner at night. They didn't take breaks on us, so we don't take breaks on them. So we toast our ancestors. Um, we toast our mothers and our fathers, our grandmas, our grandfathers, our aunts, our uncles, our friends, and our cousins. Um, we toast our nieces and our nephews, all those that have made the transition, right? We toast them. And we remember them. We call on them by name. If you have names, either post them up or say them um, to yourself at home. Uh, Miles Brown, Ms. Ann, Robert Metex, Anna Davis, Herman Brown, C. and Rosalie Tilly, Georgia, William Walton, Christopher, Fanny Gadsden, Eileen, Uncle Chris, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Margaret Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Mon Alvaro, and Gina. Wash our list. <clears throat> John Fillard, Montague Pitmanel, Jamon Jones, Mama Malika, Dr. Marianne, Dr. M yeah, Dr. Marianne Williams, Elder Hairston, Elder Donaldson, Elder Farmer, Pastor Yusuf Weston. To pet my Ron, no more X. Not to keep it, Manel. Jeremiah Tapping. That's all I can think of in my line right now. We toast and we say Ashe. From there, we move to the present moment. Today is Coochie Chocolate. What a great day! A great day to define ourselves for ourselves. In this world, right? So we lift up our glass. Um, 
Let me toast. Kuzma Jagalia. Uh, I think it's the dead correspondence as far as, as the law of the Hermetic law is correspondence. The myotic principle is justice. So we test those principles and we say I say. From there, we move on to our children, our children's children, on to infinity. Remember our children. Um, we struggle with them. Uh, we guide them. Uh, we uplift them. Um, and we toast our children, our children's children, on to infinity. Because everything we think, say, and do affects our children. And sometimes we got to check ourselves. Because yesterday I was very short temper with my with my girl so I have to apologize to them and, and move forward today so we lift up our glass and we toast them and we say shame from there I toast you I toast you any of the struggles that you want the answers is move on we toast any of the victories that you ever had in the last couple of days I toast you um, anything that you want toast it you know what I'm saying? I toast it for you. And we say, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I wish y'all peace, power, joy, and 100 years. A little wine here. Mm. Like, like some mature Welch's grape over here. What's going on? Good work, Mr. Brown. All right, Facebook, I'm about to move over and do my YouTube piece. And remember, subject today is the black woman, public enemy number one. So go on, um, check it out. It should be posted up probably about 9 a.m. on um, YouTube. Like, subscribe. Most importantly, share. I want to thank everybody for checking it out. I had some people out on, I think, the West Coast yesterday. Check it out. Um, I don't know. I ain't get. It. I ain't really get a chance to look at the total numbers by the end of the day. But by about twelve in the afternoon, it was like at least twelve Eastern Standard Time, of like twenty-three people. Um, Peace. You have a wonderful day as well. All right. You take it easy. Alright, peace YouTube. I told y'all I was going to start giving y'all a little break so that y'all will be able to find how to get straight to the content outside of the toast. Because the toast is important, and I think it's important that we should toast our ancestors. But some of y'all are doing it, and y'all no longer need me to do it for you. So, you can do it yourself, and you can jump straight to the content. So... I'm going to start putting on the marker exactly, approximately where you can start. I ain't going to say exactly because, you know, I got to remember all that. But, as you can see, I'm making my, um, my detoxer. Um, that was the ambrosia vinegar. We got the turmeric. We got the cinnamon. We got the cayenne. I'm going to take my coconut oil, put some coconut oil in there. And also, we're going to do the palm oil. So now, what, what's the subject today? As a matter of fact, I'm going to finish this up, and we will continue. All right. I feel like Rocky. I need the soundtrack. You know, remember when Rocky used to get up and drink that raw eggs in the morning? I never understood that, but, but you know, I got to do my drink. 
as well as the ambrosia every day. You know what I'm saying? I found out about those parasites. You know, it's very interesting. Some of the stuff you come across. And speaking of that, I get into the subject of the day. Public enemy, public enemy number one. So, the, the thought hit me while I was doing some, some research. Um, you know, I'm constantly reading. I'm constantly trying to find new information that I could bring and I could share with my family. Um, and also just having information. I've always been like that. And I know I'm going to possibly offend some people with this, but it is what it is, right? And they, you know, and, and the goal is not necessarily to offend, but it's kind of to make people think because really that's what the journey was originally about. You know, I'm getting into a little bit of the health stuff because I feel that I, I, I have to, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, the, the, the original idea of a Giami journey was um, creating searchers, creating seekers, um, journeyers, individuals that um, um, could have conversations, share ideas, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that's the ultimate food. That's the ultimate, you know what I'm saying? That's the ultimate help. But if the body is messed up, then it's kind of hard for the mind to really be able to express itself because the mind expresses itself through the through the body, whether it's using the hands to draw or using the mouth to speak, you know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or um, using the voice to sing. Or, or using the body to dance and to express itself or to dance with your hands like I do when I'm talking, right? So the, the original idea of the journey was to, to motivate minds, right? Because it's like, it's like, um, it's like, it's like a desert of, you know, like you got food deserts in our community. For those that don't know, food deserts are places where you go and there is no fresh, um, fresh food, all the can and bag, all the processed stuff that we've been talking about is, is in our neighborhood. It's like a food desert, but there's also a thought desert, right? Where we are, where you have areas where you have people and individuals, um, especially black folks, because that's who I know, where we have individuals in thought deserts, right, where it's like, you know, you got thoughts that are thousands of years old, that's, that's holding communities locked in place, right, so one of the thoughts that I had to challenge, because for years, I made my living on this, and I know it's other people that made their living, this, living on this, looking at the, looking at the, 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 the thing, the idea that the black man is the biggest danger to white supremacy. The black man is public enemy number one. And I really had to look at the idea, and I've been looking at it for a while, right? Because, you know, being who Brother Hatim is, I have a lot of adopted sons, but I have a lot of adopted daughters, right? And one of the things that I noticed about my daughters, right? When they come around a man and they feel safe and they feel secure, they learn faster, they mature quicker. They, I mean, they hold on to information a lot longer. And in many ways, they are a lot more loyal. Now, I'm just, you know, this is me. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I, I got got daughters of a certain age, I got sons of a certain age, they, I mean, that's, and they both the same age, women will pick up stuff a lot faster, right, the young ladies will pick up stuff a lot faster, and hold on to it just a little bit longer, not even longer, they will pick it up faster, and hold on to it longer, right, and I'm looking at this idea of the black man being public enemy number one, black man being the target, and I'm looking at the whole idea and I have to wonder and I have to throw this question out, right? And I have to look back into my studies. One of the books that I ran across years ago was The Art of War by Sun Tzu. 
and one of the often quoted verses from Sun Tzu is that all war is deception. All warfare is ultimately deception. So that means that if I get you thinking, my idea is, my, my goal is to get you to start thinking about one thing while I'm sneaking behind you or to get you watching my, my left hand while I'm knocking you out with my right hand. You can see it in boxing, you can see it in MMA, you can see it in basketball, you can see it in football. It's all about deceiving your opponent. Right, and for years we had thought we thought that we had the the idea down. We thought we had the idea or the the the, the strategy of of West Asians um, or this West Asian system. Let's say that because you know you have you are, all West Asians are trying to destroy us, but you have a system that's in place that destroys all challenges to the leadership or the world order as it stands right now. Right now, it's leaning towards West Asians. And anybody that stands up to threaten that or anybody that is perceived as a threat to that is destroyed. And for a long time, we were taught or we believed that the black man was um, um, the number one opponent, but through my own personal insight, my own personal experiences, I have to ask a question, why do we assume that, why, you know, and I know a lot of you, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, like I said, a lot of y'all out there making y'all living off the fact that there is money being made on the fact that black men are supposedly targeted, right? Black men are targeted. Black men are oppressed, are the most oppressed group. We die sooner, right? We go to jail more. We're dropping out of school even faster. And there's millions, if not billions of dollars that are pouring into communities, funding initiatives, to work with black males. Now, a couple of days ago, I made this statement. I said, because we was talking about rites of passage or something, and I said, well, the rites of passage is, is, is a cultural piece that men use to, in a sense, compete with women, right? Because men give birth to the culture and the culture shapes and forms the men and it also shapes and forms the society. But the thing that the, the pieces that form the societies are people that come up out of families and it's the woman who control the family. Now, it's the woman that rules the family. It's the man that rules society. That's just my perspective, right? Because, because you can have, you, the family comes from the woman, right? You can have a man, and you can have a group of men, right? You can have a group of men and women. But when a man and a woman come together and create life, that life comes up out of the woman. She's the first teacher. She's the first nurturer. And for all that child knows, she's the first God. That woman provides that child with nutrients. That woman provides that child with emotional support. That woman provides that child with a foundation and stability. She, she puts the ideas on that child. Her. Right? And she does this with all her children. So the family comes up through the woman, and the woman runs and holds that family unit together. Even when you have an oppressive relationship, it's usually the woman that holds that family in place. It's usually the woman that holds those children up under the domination of that man. 
So it's the woman that is the nucleus around which the family, which the family flows. And now, this is the piece, and this is where we get to the where we get to the part that's gonna hurt some of y'all feelings, right? When I kill a man, I kill a man. <laughs> I mean, I want y'all to understand that. When I destroy a man, I destroy a man, right? When I destroy a woman, I destroy a family. So, if I'm at war and I got a person on my side that if I kill him, I kill one. But if I kill her, I kill possibly four. I kill two at least. I kill future. I'm killing her. Right? Now, family, I know a lot of y'all. It's against the honor code to kill women. But I need y'all to really understand, dude. This 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 West Asian system ain't never had no goddamn honor code. And if they did have an honor code, their honor code, you don't fit in. So they don't look at you or your women as something worthy of honor. So they kill both of you. Right? So now. Black men, we've been running around, you know what I'm saying? Because some of y'all going to be butthurt about this. We've been running around talking about how we are oppressed. We really need to look at the fact that in order for them to dominate us, they got to dominate our woman. They got to destroy the woman because from the woman, the children come. If I destroy the woman, if I destroy her mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the children are going to be destroyed mentally, emotionally, spiritually. If I make her unhealthy, the children are going to be unhealthy. So although we want to scream how oppressed we are, we're not really looking at the fact that our mamas and our sisters and our daughters are the most oppressed. Right? They are the, they are the major danger to this whole piece. Because if they are not protected, if they are not guided, they destroy us. You can complain. Let's let's look at the let's let's look at the the group of black men we got right now, family. Right? Where where did they come from? They came from black women. Let's look at the young ladies we got on on on, on YouTube on Facebook. Who, who 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 produced them? Right? They came from. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like this: if you want to start the problem, you start with the woman. You start by breaking down the woman. I don't have to kill you. As a matter of fact, it don't benefit me to kill you. I just kill your people by a slow death. So our women are under attack, family. And women are under attack, I believe. Now, I, ain't, I'm not, I don't want to say this as a fact. They're public enemy number one. Because you destroy the woman. You destroy a group. You killed Brother Hatim, you just killed Brother Hatim. For generations long before, even long before the incursions of West Asia, long before our captivity, women have been raising families without men. Whether they lost them um, during, during tribal wars or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Men going out to explore, the woman will hold that foundation. So long, long before all of this, women were running the family. You destroy her, you destroy her is easy. You start cycles. I mean, because it's like, you know, I mean, we look at the cycles and everybody complain about the cycles, right? But nobody is putting their arms around. Nobody, think about it. If I am able to produce predators that could slip into your community, they even come from your community, right? And they harm one of the daughters. That daughter grows up scarred and she grows up scarred. Those scars travel through her, travel through her womb, entering her bloodline. 
if I'm able to attack the self-esteem of the woman. See, and then, and I want y'all to think about this, right? You don't find it strange that we live in a system that will, one, on one hand, attack public enemy number one, the black man, and then provide grants on the other hand to try to save them? Am I the only one that could look at that and be like, it's something not right about that? We're pumping millions. we pumping billions into saving black men. But how many black girl programs is it? We, you know, we even had President Obama come out with an initiative for black men. If you want to get the black men straight, start with saving a generation of black women. Because they bring the next generation of black men. Hell, most men do what they do, trying to impress women. So if we change the woman's standards, we change a whole generation of men. No, but maybe that makes too much sense. Destroy the woman, destroy the people. Destroy the woman, destroy the family. So the actual attack, you know what I'm saying? Brothers, we have been we have been duped. You know what I'm saying? They threw a parry, we fell for it. Right? We, you know, and I know a lot of y'all gonna butt, butt hurt right now. Because, you know, you, you sort of, I mean, because it's so easy to be a victim. It's so easy to fall up into that stance and get yourself feeling all important and think that the world is out to get you. And then all of a sudden you find out it ain't been you at all. It's your sister. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We thinking all the time it's badass Johnny that they destroying, that they want to get, that they want to kill. No. No. It's Karima. That's who they trying to get. That's who they destroying. That's who they slowly poisoning. Right? It's like poisoning the well. You know what I'm saying? You might not notice it at first. You know what I'm of course, you notice the big deaths. But we don't notice the destruction that is going on and is being programmed into our babies. Our little girl babies. We don't notice that what's being pumped into them. You know what I'm saying? Then we look at some of the women and be like, ah, oh, that's just the way it is. No. No. See, because I want y'all to understand this, right? The woman's role is not only she she's the guardian of the family. And in being the guardian of the family, she takes up, I mean, she defends the children. And some of the behaviors that we're seeing are at Tie survival. That means something is wrong. All right, fam. I'm just saying. Just consider it. Just, just think about it. All right? Public enemy number one. And start watching your daughters. Start big up in your daughters. All right? Your sisters. All right? Family. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because it's like. At one point in time, man, this, and I want y'all to think about this, right? At one point in time, violation of a woman was a, was a death thing, family. Violation of a woman was a death, was death, right? But now we, you know, we, we get into the gangster movies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, we get into all of the ideas that they give us about the bonds of brotherhood, which are good, right? But the brotherhood was formed to protect the sisters. You need to understand that, right? It was beyond, you know what I'm saying? See, because I want you to think about the mentality they put on this money over bitches. I mean, just, just think about the language, money over Money over your mama, money over your sister, money over your daughters, right? When the money is your mother, when the money is your sisters, when the money is your daughters, because through them comes your future. But because you're so caught up in 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 
and money over bitches. You know, getting it right now. I got to have it right now because we're so caught up into that. We're too dumb to see that the actual attack that's being launched is against black women. Because if I destroy them, y'all ain't. If you look at uh, destruction of black civilization, one of the strategies that has always been used against us is people would line up on the periphery and start working their way on the inside by getting with the women, having children. What's one of the first things? I mean, what is the treasure of the pirate? What is the, you know what I'm saying? What is the treasure of the conqueror? They get the booty. Y'all honestly think the booty is objects? No, the booty was your mama and your sister. Y'all don't get that shit. The prize of war is women. Land and women. Damn. We honestly, I mean, we all women are the gold. You don't get that. You don't even you I mean, have you even looked at the history? Who kept who was the keeper of the gold in, in, in most black families? So I'm gonna go and drink this up. And I'm just I just want you I like I said, family, just think about it. Right? And then we got these I mean we got these niggas out here attacking um, you know, because I understand the anger, right? But the piece is just like you were allotted a space to feel as if you were the victim and, and, and shit like that. You need to change the perspective just a little bit and look and say, if, if what if this is a possibility, right? And those sisters who have not been, in a sense, affected or touched yet we need to kind of blanket them right so that other sisters can see because once they start seeing the protection coming out dude they're gonna gravitate towards it and they're gonna start working to get inside that right and sisters y'all need to come y'all need to come close and y'all need to be keeping a better eye on each other and y'all need to be setting some perimeters about who could get into the circle right see because just like brothers need to to click up Sisters, y'all need to click up and y'all need to set standards, right? You know what I'm saying? Because there needs to be a difference between you and those out there. You know, like the kids call them, those thoughts. Those hoes over there, or I guess, however they say it. You know what I'm saying? However you want it, however y'all want it. There has to be standards. And then you did, because you can't be talking about that over there and you doing that shit right here. Right, so the whole piece is like boom, you know. So now, whenever when we start raising the standard within the black women, the black the, the black man naturally is gonna raise up. Why? You know, because I love me some women. So if the standard is set for what you accept from me, right, and if the standard is set from what you expect from yourself. We can't no, do nothing but grow. But of course, they're going to attack that shit. Right? And you're going to have those butt sore men who like who, who miss their attention and shit. Right? Going to do shit to start getting their attention. Right? Because really, I mean, that's what a lot of us do. We go out, we get hurt, and we do dumb shit so that we get attention. I mean, really, just, I mean, really, just, just watch, watch, watch some of your brothers. Right? We'll do some dumb shit to get hurt so that we can take all the attention. So, this is Brother Hot Tim. Um, thank you for your time, and I'm out. Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there, the fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you, right there. And for those that want more information about Jamie Journey, go to our site should be right about there.